And I say to you, my brothers and my sisters, those of you that are ready to rise up and come away, it's time for us to find ourselves on the altar right here at House of Prayer and Praise. I know sometimes you want to stream, sometimes you say, I can pray at home, but there's something God has for you that you're not going to receive unless you rise up and come away. You have to come away from your comfort zone to meet him. Woo! Because he has something on a whole new level for us in the year of 2018. in the air somebody say this is my Bible and I am what it says I am and I can do what it says I can do because I'm a believer and not a doubter I'm a doer and not a hearer only and my life is better after having heard the word of faith faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so I'm about to be taught the infallible, the incorruptible. Mm, I like that, the infallible, the incorruptible word of God. My mind is alert and my heart is receptive. And I boldly confess that I'll never be the same. No, I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Remain standing and go to, with me to the book of Matthew Matthew chapter number six, verse number 33. One verse I believe is very familiar. Our theme this month is first fruits, keeping first things first. Those of you that are visiting with us, we thank you for joining us in worship. And those of you that are streaming live, we want to say God bless you. And We'd like for you to come and visit us anytime you're in our area. Feel free to stop by 16520 Wyoming here at House of Prayer and Praise. And I believe you'll feel right at home and you'll be blessed because this is where we believe you will experience the love and love the experience. Amen. So we send our love out to all of the congregation here today. Amen. The book of Matthew chapter number 6 verse number 33 in the king james version it says this but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be y'all see that next word somebody say added added unto you. In the Amplified, it reads like this, but first and most importantly, seek and aim at and strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. The attitude and the character of God is what we seek after. And all of these other things will be given unto you. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody said amen. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. Keeping first things first. Somebody say that with me. Keeping First things first. As we look at today, we know that this is the first Sunday in a brand new year. Not only a new year, but in a brand new month. We are at January the 7th, 2018. 
And January is, is that first in the year. It is the first month that has 31 days in it. It is often noted as the coldest month of the year. Do I have a witness? I believe everybody here in Michigan already feels the chill and the cold of the month of January. And not only is it the coldest month, but it has 31 days. Lord, help us today. It, it, it is a wonderful month because the birthstone for this month is the garnet, which is a red, uh, dark color. Looks something like a ruby, but it represents constancy. It, it represents uh, the quality of being faithful. And I believe that's what God is saying to us, House of Prayer and Praise, is that God wants us to exhibit the quality of being faithful and dependable. It also means the quality of being enduring and unchanging. And that's sometimes tough to do because life comes at you fast and it comes at you hard, amen. But God said he has a way that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all of these other things will be added unto us. This scripture here is a part of what Jesus taught as the Sermon on the Mount. And I believe the call today is for us to put our priorities in order. God says it's time, it's the first Sunday. I want you to put your priorities in order. Putting God, somebody say, first. It's good to put him first because so often other things take his place. And it's so easy, especially with the holidays, we had so much to do. First, we had to get the Christmas tree and the decorations up. We had to buy all the presents. And now we have to take the Christmas tree down. Man, is still up. It looks so cute, I said, well, just a few more weeks won't hurt, right? It, it, it just seemed like it's just so much to do around these holidays. But here the writer says to seek the kingdom of God above all else means to put God first in your life, to fill your thoughts and your desires with him. And I believe that's all God is saying. It's real simple. I just kept hearing God say, seek and Seek, seek first. Before I can get to first, I got to the word of seeking. Seeking is just not bumping around and hoping that you bump into what you're looking for. But when you seek something, you diligently look for it. And I believe this month we're diligently looking for something from God as we put our priorities in place. We are to take on his character, to obey his word. And God says that there's nothing else more important than putting him first. Somebody say amen. amen. And as we put him first, we'll begin to see things line up. It's the wonderful thing about God is that when we spend time with God, then his word gets in us and it comes out of us and we line up with his word. And therefore, when the word of God tells us that he'll give us the desires of our heart, the reason why they're not crazy is because he put the desire in there first of all. Because you've been in his word. And so what comes out of you is already his desire because your steps are ordered by the Lord. Somebody clap your hands and say, first things first. Now, I'm going to try to teach this how God put it in my spirit. And we pray that it just blesses you today. Because I believe God wants us to, somebody say, connect with him. And it's something about being connected with him. And as we look at the word of God, sometimes we see it, but we feel disconnected. Have you ever felt that God was far away? Because there's a listening side to prayer. And most of the time when we come in prayer, we do all of the talking. And after we finish doing all the talking, we say prayer is up and we're on our way. 
But I believe when we really want to connect with God, we stay there a little bit longer and say in 2018, I'm not going to just do all the talking in prayer, but God, I'm going to give you a chance to holler back at me. Somebody say, holler back, holler back. God, I need you to holler back because I have a whole list of stuff, but I need you to holler back because when you holler back, you give me strategy. You instruct me as to where to go and what to do. Somebody clap your hands and say, holler back at me. Holler at your girl. God, I need you to talk to me. It's, it's something when we reconnect with God because when we look at things in the beginning, God created Adam. And when he created Adam, he took the rib out of Adam and he made a woman. And that woman was now bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. And he brought them together in Genesis 1 and said, and the two shall become one. And I believe that oneness that he created in the beginning is the same oneness he wants with us. In the New Testament, it says, me and my father are one. Jesus said, I want you to be like us. I want you to be one. And it's amazing that he had to put Adam to sleep to bring him his bride. And sometimes the thing that God needs to do in your life, you too awake to receive it. You, your, your flesh, your, your, your carnal nature, they're two men that God really refers to. Even though there are over 8 billion people in the world, God really just looks at two men. The first man, Adam, and the second man, Adam. Now, the first man, Adam, amen, was in the garden. And if we stay connected to him, we're carnal. But here today in our fast and this month, we want to connect to the second man, Adam, and his name is Jesus Christ because we need to be spiritual. Somebody clap your hands and say, that's, that's what I want to do. I, I want to do. It's, it's something about the word of God because there's a story in the Bible about a man that wanted to be a part of the kingdom. And you know the story in John chapter 3, there was a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and he said, I want to be a part of your kingdom. Scripture said, seek ye first the kingdom. Nicodemus said, I want to be a part of the kingdom. And Jesus said, you're not my kid. You're not my child. Ain't that something? And he said, so, so what do I need to do? He said, you must be born again. So as we seek first the kingdom, it said, except the man be born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. And even though we start this new year and we're in the same place singing the same songs, all of us may not connect if we're not ready to be born again. We have to be born of the water and the spirit in order to connect to him. If not, we're still carnal and connected to the first man, Adam. God says, if you're going to get in this kingdom, you have to be connected to the second man, Adam, Jesus. And the only way you could do that is by repenting of your sins, being baptized, and you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, to give you power to live this life as a born-again creature. Clap your hands and say, first things, first things, first thing. Y'all pray for me. I'm going somewhere, amen. So, so, so you have to be born again. And the beautiful thing about it is that God created the first man. He was the first created man, Adam. And the next one was his begotten son, Jesus. And the amazing thing about Jesus is Jesus comes on the scene. And Jesus is in this place and he fills the bitter cup. And he says, God, I don't want to have to do this. He said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And God said, if I don't put you to sleep, I can't bring you your bride. Just like he put Adam to sleep in Genesis, the second man, Adam, had to go to sleep. 
in order to get the bride. <laughs> Woo! And there on the cross, when he totally submitted and he was obedient unto death, it said that when they came, they normally broke the legs of those that were on the cross. They said Jesus had already given up the ghost. <laughs> the good thing about that is that the Bible says that he couldn't, he had to be a lamb without spot or blemish. He couldn't have any broken bones to be offered up. And the good thing about it is when they came to him, he was already gone. So they didn't even have to break his legs. So the scripture is being fulfilled. But you know they had to test it out. They had to make sure Jesus was dead. So the Roman soldier pulled out his knife and pierced him in his side. Woo! They wanted to make sure he was good and gone. But the good thing about it, they did a surgery. And when he went to sleep, they pierced him in the side, almost like God put Adam to sleep in the garden. And out of his side came blood and water. Glory to God. And God is pulling something out of the side of Jesus. And out of his side came blood and water. And in the New Testament, it's the testament of the blood. Woo! That's the place where the church came out. Tell somebody, I came out of his side. I, I came out of his side. Being born again, I came out of his side. Out of his side came blood and water. And not only am I a part of the body of Christ, now I'm the bride. Yeah. I'm Elder Stephen Bennett Jr. And I hope that you're enjoying watching so far. We're going to ask you to become a partner with us. The economy may be still improving since the Great Recession, but the recovery efforts are leaving millions of people who are hit the hardest still behind. With unemployment, the rising cost of living, and stagnant wages, there are people who are still struggling. And hunger in America is closer than you think. One of our assignments at House of Prayer and Praise is to feed the hungry. Every month, we do community feedings where we pass out boxes of food to our community. And every quarter, we extend those borders and we reach further and further away. We are asking you to become a partner with us in this effort. I'm asking you to take a moment and ask God, what should you give today to be a blessing to somebody else's life? There are several ways that you can give today. You can text to give, which is when you text 77977, that's the number, and then the message you're going to text, H-O-P-P, -P, give. You're going to send it, and you can give that way. Or you can give by online. Go to hoppministries.org. Go to the online giving, and you can be a blessing that way. Or you can send checks to House of Brand Praise, 16520 Wyoming, Detroit, Michigan, 48221. How did, how, how did I become the bride of Christ? Because I came out of his side. He, oh, Father. So let's go to a love story. Let's go to the book of Solomon, Songs of Solomon. Y'all's getting ready to get a little heated. Songs of Solomon always talk about love. And the love story. Songs of Solomon, chapter number 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. The writer begins to say this. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh. Look how homeboy coming. Ooh, goodness. He coming leaping upon the mountains and skipping upon the hills. What you say, what you say, what you say. Look how excited he is to see her. He comes leaping upon the mountains and skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roll or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall and he looketh forth at the window, showing himself through the lattice. What, what is a lattice? A lattice is like a crisscross 
kind of divider. Uh, uh, you can kind of peek through it, but you can't see the whole picture. And I believe sometimes when we walk with God, it's like we're peeping through a lattice and we really can't see the clear picture because we look through a glass darkly, amen, and we understand in part, but God is getting ready to make it clear in this moment. It is something that you look through the lattice. My beloved spake and he said unto me, and this is important for us today, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Pastor Van, what are you trying to say? In this month of January, I want to say to you, rise up and come away. Somebody say it with me. Rise up and come away. My beloved spake unto me, and he said, rise up, my fair one, and come away. The voice of the Lord says, rise up, house of prayer and praise, rise up and come away. Come away and spend these three days of fasting and praying with me. Come away and read the Bible. Come and stay in prayer. Come and spend some time with me because I need you to rise up and come away. For this winter is past and the rain is gone and he's calling me. Somebody say he's calling me. He's, he's calling me. He wants intimacy. He wants me to put everything else aside. Turn off social media. Turn off cable. Put away all of the other voices and all of the other noises. He says rise up and come away. He wants a rendezvous with me. He wants a secret three day. Woo! Three day retreat. Clap your hands and say, Rise up, rise, rise up, rise up. And the reason he wants you to spend time is because you really can't see him. You really can't see him unless you leave and cleave. And I believe it's time for you to leave your bed and get up a little bit early, leave some of the things. You know, you have your regular routine, but I believe these next three days, God said, I want you to leave it and cleave to me. I want you to rise up, my beloved, and come away. You came here carnal, but I want you to leave here spiritual. Somebody clap your hands and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. I know that's right. It's like God is saying, I've come as close to you as I can come, and now it's up to you. I came this far, but you have to come the rest of the way. So often we start a new year and we make New Year's resolutions and we ask God for so many things, but we want God to do everything and God said, I'm not going to do it all. But I need you to rise up and come away. Ooh. Sometimes you rode to church with somebody that didn't get what you got because they didn't come away. They sat next to you and they didn't receive what you received in church is because they didn't get it in the spirit. Somebody clap your hands and say, I got to be more spiritual. I, I got to be more spiritual. He's calling us house of prayer and praise. I believe we're good church. I believe we do wonderful things. But I believe this month God said, I need you to be more spiritual. Because when he calls you, you find a way to fall to your knees and pray. When he calls you and you find yourself in his presence, you find yourself tears are coming out of your eyes your spirit is broken and you begin to seek God in a different way to rise up from him this Wednesday we're having meet me at the altar and I say to you my brothers and my sisters those of you that are ready to rise up and come away it's time for us to find ourselves on the altar right here at house of prayer and praise I know sometimes you want to stream sometimes you say I can pray at home but there's something God has for you that you're not going to receive unless you rise up and come away. You have to come away from your comfort zone to meet him. Woo! 
because he has something on a whole new level for us in the year of 2018. Many of you are still seeking things that you didn't receive because now it's at another level. You have to understand that I can't come away if you don't rise up. God is not going to give it to you if you don't do what you're supposed to do. He's calling you. Nudge your neighbor and say, he's calling you. He wants to bless you. He wants to feed you. He wants to pour his anointing on you. He wants to give you what the things that you've never received before. And God said, you're not going to receive it until you rise up and come away. Touch your neighbor and say, rise up and come away. You can't stay where you are to get this thing for 2018. You can't stay where you've been if you want to receive something different. We make New Year's resolutions all the time because we want something different. And God said, I got it for you, my beloved, but all you got to do is rise up and come away. Woo! Hallelujah. And what we're looking for is not an emotional experience. It's not because we're Pentecostal. It's not because we're black church. It's not because we think it's the religious thing to do in the month of January. But God has something better for us. He's calling us because he wants to give us, amen, something that we've never had. And all he's saying is, my beloved, rise up and come away. Somebody clap your hands and say, that's what I got to do. I got to do, I got to seek first the kingdom of God. And whenever you have a kingdom, you have to have a king. Yeah. And he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And Jesus is the lover of my soul. He's calling me to spend some time with me. He's leaping over mountains. He's skipping. And he's getting this close and telling me, rise up and come away. Y'all ever been in love before? Y'all ain't raising your hand. Okay. Man, that's sad, ain't it? Never. All right, let me tell you a little bit about it. <laughs> It's, it's really a wonderful thing because you, you begin to change when you fall in love. You, you talk on the phone longer than you normally talk. You look up and say, man, I've been on the phone a whole hour. Mm. We ain't fussing. We ain't fighting. We ain't really saying hardly nothing. But you just don't want to hang up. That's the way God said, I want you to rise up and come away. I don't want you to be in such a hurry to get off the phone and get off your knees and get out of my presence. And then, then, then it gets so good to you, you start saying, I miss you. You ever miss somebody? That means you long to be with them. After a while, you know they schedule and you know, ooh, they should be eating lunch. They should be getting off. He should be walking to his car right about now. Oh, y'all ain't never been there. Y'all. I know this is off day. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you really get to know him. Why? Because you want to spend some time with him. You want to spend some time with them. And Jesus, here he comes in the book of Songs of Solomon. He said, rise up and come away. Because I didn't came as far as I can come. And I need you to come the rest of the way. And the thing about God is God has a way of speaking to you. He used Jesus. You remember when Jesus said, listen, I'm seeking somebody. Jesus said, I must needs go to Samaria. And I don't know where you live, but God said he's sending somebody that's seeking you. And Jesus was seeking somebody. So he said, I need to go to Samaria. So what did he do? You know when you got a date, you don't want all that company. He told the disciples, y'all go get lunch. Y'all ever did that? Send everybody else away so you can spend some private time? Oh, y'all don't want to be honest. Okay. 
Y'all trying to figure it out now. After I get out of church, how I'm going to rendezvous with my boo. Come on, Val, Pastor Val, preach. Come on, so we can go. Got dinner, got the movies. You know how you get in a hurry. You just want to spend some time with them. Jesus said, listen, disciples, y'all go away and get some food because I'm seeking somebody. And he had his eye on special sister. So here she comes up to the well. Mm-hmm. And, he, and you, you know how you got your game. Y'all got your favorite line. He said, uh, give me some water. <laughs> and she said, you, you don't want no water. I know you don't want no water because you don't even have nothing to draw with. But she knew it was sensual. She knew that you, you know when homeboy talked to you and hello just ain't hello. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> you, you. She, she sensed something in his voice that he was calling her. And, and he looked at her and he was like a whale sitting on a whale because he, he, he was there at Jacob's well. But Jesus was there and, and he said, if you knew who you were talking to, you wouldn't even ask me and you wouldn't even talk to me like this. What am I trying to say? I'm saying house of prayer and praise. God has somebody that's coming in your presence and you don't want to miss him. Because they're not coming like the rest of them can. Things are not going to be like they used to be. But, but, but we have to hear his voice. Jesus is sitting on the well. And he said, if you knew who you were talking to. I have some water that you don't have. I know you got water. But if you drink of the water that I have, you'll never thirst again. And I'm just wanting to say to you today, I want you to be thirsty. Somebody tap your neighbor and say, it's time to get thirsty. It's time to get thirsty. It's time to get thirsty. It was time for her to get thirsty. And she started getting thirsty. You ever got thirsty and you just wanted some water? And she said, give me this water to drink that I'll thirst no more. And I won't even have to come back to this well. And I believe House of Prayer and Praise in this next three days, God has something that he wants to give to you, but you got to be thirsty in order to get it. Now, if I have some thirsty people in here, put your hands together and say, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm going to stay right here at this well because I need a water. Oh, shit. I need something to rise up out of me that'll flow into everlasting life. Tell somebody I need a refreshing. I need a refreshing. I need a refreshing. And it was amazing. <laughs> Woo! He said, go get your husband. I, I, I ain't got no husband. And the one you with ain't yours. So everybody's sleeping. Oh, I shouldn't talk about that in January. Get out of his bed. Get out of her bed. He said, rise up. Come away. Y'all been slipping and sliding. And still wanting the blessings of God. But he said, where I'm getting ready to take you now, you got to say, give me this water. I've had that, and I had this, and I hung out. Yeah, I did it, and it was good. We had a great time. But, but there's something missing in my soul. He said, if you keep drinking that water, you'll always be thirsty. You'll never be fulfilled. Because all that's in this world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. And that's what the devil uses to get us. Our flesh start lusting after stuff. Woo! So we got to put it to rest. That's why we have to resist the devil. And he'll flee from us. But we will be tempted. But God will always give you a way of escape. Tell somebody I'm getting up and I'm going to rise up. And I'm going to come away. Somebody clap your hands and say, I'm getting out of this. I'm getting out of 
this. So it's a day and a time. It says God is looking for the true worshiper. Is he looking for you? Tell your neighbor, yes, he's looking for me. He's looking for me because I'm the true worshiper. How do you know you're true? Because he said you'll worship me in spirit and in truth. You got to be connected to the second man, Adam. You got to be born again huh? so you can worship him in spirit and in truth. Huh? You got to stop lying and stop cussing, stop getting high. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Those that worship spirit and in truth are the ones I'm looking for. And, 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 and so it's like the woman at the well is looking at him and saying, are you talking about water or are you talking about worship? And it's like in God's presence, worship is water. Because it brings such a refreshing. Because God can only bring you so far. Then you have to go in and worship. Tell your neighbor, I got to go. I got to go. I can't stay where I am, but I got to go to him. And I got to worship him in spirit and in truth. I have to repent of what I've done wrong. And I got to trust him. Tell your neighbor, get scary. But I'm telling you, when you worship God, he'll meet you where you are. I'm telling you, he'll go to jail with you. Y'all don't believe it? Y'all know in the Bible, Paul and Silas were locked up in prison. And they begin to sing praises and worship. No matter where you are, who you hooked up with, what you're doing, God said, if you'll rise up and come away and go to worship, I'll meet you right where you are. And they were locked up in prison. And the Bible says that all of a sudden there was an earthquake. Ooh, God's getting ready to shake everything around you. You think you're in a place where you can't get out. God said there's no place that I can't meet you at. If you learn to worship me in spirit and in truth. Say the earthquake came. Don't you feel the ground moving under your feet? God's opening the doors. That situation that you thought could never happen. Don't y'all feel it? Don't y'all hear it? Tap your neighbor and say, don't you feel it? Your breakthrough is here. Don't you feel it? Your breakthrough is right here. God said the chains are coming off today. The breakthrough is coming today. It's coming off your mind. It's coming off your heart. And it's at all the prison doors were open because they begin to worship. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, something's getting ready to happen right now because I'm getting ready to rise up and go in. I can't go back home like this. I got to go in before I go home. Tell your neighbor, you better go in before you go home. Oh, come on, lift up your hands. Somebody get to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords the lover of my soul. God, I seek you first. The kingdom of God and all of your righteousness and all these other things are getting ready to be added to me. Woo! Grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm going to make sure you're not stuck. <laughs> I'm getting ready to pull you up out of that place. And I'm going to pull you into the presence of God. Tell somebody, let's go in his presence. Let's go see him. Let's go meet him. Let's give him some worship. Let's give him some honor. Let's give him some glory. Now, come on, give him a hallelujah.
to get saved who do you want to be delivered Woo, Sheke. I'm not coming out by myself but I want to bring somebody with me Woo, put your hands together and clap give God praise Woo. rise up come away seeking the seeking savior he seeks them that are lost. Sometimes we feel we're not good enough. We keep saying, God, I'm going to come when I stop doing this and when I stop doing that. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This Sunday, before you leave, I want to offer you that rest that you can only get from God, but you got to rise up and come away. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me because I'm meek and lowly in heart. My way is easy. My burden is light. Sometimes what you're going through is not easy and is not light. So could it be that maybe it's not God's will for you to be there? And God just wants you to rise up and come away. <laughs> 